Good morning and welcome to the Tarat podcast. Thank you for joining us to our audience from around the world. Thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, we are very happy to once again have Anders Strid joining us today from the Swedish Tax Agency. He is a strategist there and author of the book From Fear Tax Collector to Popular Service Agency. We're providing a link in the bottom of our YouTube channel so that you can um, acquire a copy for yourself. It's an interesting read. We highly recommend it. And just a warm welcome again to you, Anders. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Well, thank you, Annette. It's a pleasure. It's been a pleasure to be part of this podcast last time, and I really look forward to today's session. We, we had such... Sorry, please. No. Oh. No, I just... Uh, <laughs> Please, Annette. Okay, sorry. Uh, we had such incredible interest in your previous conversation that we had to invite you back uh, for a Q&A session today, this morning, to follow up on the May 11th um, presentation that Anders did. If in case you missed it, you're welcome to join us in the Tarat YouTube channel where the video is there um, for you to watch at your own ease. Um, today, hosting today's event, we have Des Shilabuka. We call him Des for short, affectionately. Um, he is a tax advisor and formerly with the Kenya Revenue Authority. He's skilled in tax policy and advisory, business analysis and development finance, international certified tax assessor. He's also TADAT trained and a TADAT certified assessor. Thank you so much, Des, for joining us this morning and welcome to the TADAT podcast. Uh, <coughs> thank you, Annette. Uh... I'm very glad to be part of this uh, initiative and uh, we are ready to go. Uh, uh, thank you so much. Yeah. Fantastic. A warm welcome to you both. So um, I think I've said enough this morning. I'll hand over the floor to you, Des and Anders, um, and we'll touch back with our audience a little later. Please feel free to join us and ask us questions on the live YouTube chat or on LinkedIn. We'd be happy to pass them along to Des so that he can uh, then pose the questions to Anders. So without further ado, please, thank you very much. Okay, let's take it away, Des. Let's do it. <laughs> uh, so um, viewers, uh, this is gonna be just um, a conversation, a kind of interaction uh, between me and Anders. And, um, what we're gonna do is like you will listen and you post your questions on the chat. Um, so uh, Anders, welcome again. Um, we're glad to have you in the house. Um, so um, as you've heard, uh, Anders is the uh, the other uh, with Leonard uh, from Fiat Tax Collector to Popular Service Agency, uh, and I think it it resonates very well with most of the tax community around the world. Um, so um, uh, maybe just to kick, kick us off, um, I, 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 when, when I talk about the STA, you just mean, uh, we mean the Swedish uh, tax uh, agency. So um, the, the, the first uh, thing that maybe I'll just want uh, Leonard to just maybe uh, um, uh, Anders to, I'm sorry, Anders to just uh, start us off with is uh, just uh, to recap in, in terms of what he talked last time, but it, uh, just in very few words, um, uh, it is understood that the the STA uh, took a long journey to achieve uh, the milestone it has, uh, given uh, the current environment, uh, how long uh, did it take? Uh, uh, how, how, how long can it take if we relate to now Africa, in, in your own view, how long can it uh, uh, take a tax administration in Africa to read the level of STA uh, that it currently now is uh, having? Uh, and then uh, uh, like now following up to that is like, maybe you can just uh, tell us something to do with the, um, <clears throat> how the STA uh, transformed itself uh, from, uh, an authority now to an agency. What led yes. to this? Uh, maybe just... Uh, in, yes, in, th in. thank you, Des. I'll, I'll try my best. And those who wanted to dig deeper in this subject can, can look at the earlier episode of the pod that we did, or perhaps look in the book if you're interested. But to be, to be short, I could say that going back in time, we had a strategy where we wanted to like scare people into to, to compliance. So we thought we saw the taxpayers more as opponent. And uh, I think that they saw us as opponents as well. So it's very, very frosty relationship. And a good result, we thought that if we do as many corrections as possible, 
that is a good result. And if you could raise money after like audit activities, we also saw that as a, as a good result. But then we shifted our strategic view on really what is a good result towards getting it right from the start instead. So instead of looking for risks of fault and risks of non-compliance, we, we looked at the other side of the coin. We wanted to know what motivates people, what really, I mean, benefits compliance, what contributes to compliance. And we realized that the relationship between us and the taxpayers are very crucial in order to get it going. And also that trust is very important. And trust is something that we realized that we have to earn in everything we do. So we changed our strategy towards more a trust-based approach, trying to strengthen the willingness to comply. And what we have done is to listen to taxpayers. So that has been crucial to listen and understand what is taxpayers situation like uh, being a small business, being a taxpayer. And we have brought in this knowledge into the organization and used this as a base for mm -hmm. our strategy. So, and you said how long time it has been taking. Usually we go back to the 1970s when we describe our journey. But at the time we, we did this transformation, I would say the most lion part happened between the beginning of year 2000 and 2012, something like that. But we didn't know during the transformation how long time it would take. And given the the conditions in, in Africa that you mentioned here, how long can similar transformation take in Africa? I would say that I, I worked a little bit with, with African tax administration that you have uh, good conditions for doing a change. And I see, think that it's possible to, to even do it like sort of faster, <laughs> but it takes time. Uh, so it's not something that you do in a few months and then it's, then it's done. It takes years and you have to have uh, the approach for the whole of the organization. So it's not that you can just take parts of the organization or saying these fancy words and something would happen. So you have to have like everyone on board. But I see possibilities. I see good initiatives in Africa and I see possibilities when it comes to like economic growth and so on that the tax administrations can be like more co-players in the economy than, than opponents, which I think is, is good possibilities in the African context. Uh, uh, thank you. Now that you mentioned uh, uh, something to do with like, uh, uh, given the, the conditions that are in Africa that are very favorable, uh, these, uh, <laughs> this, this, this journey can take even a shorter period. Uh, uh, factoring in the issues to do with, uh, with even uh, 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 technical assistance, uh, uh, knowledge sharing. Uh, but now just related to that, uh, in, in, in your transformational journey, uh, there, is, um, there is the fear factor. Uh, the fear factor, as you say, from fear to respect. The fear factor, uh, as it, it, it can really resonate very well with the most uh, current, uh, the current uh, tax administrations, whereby even the, the citizenry are, are just even afraid. Uh, they are afraid to even just even go into that building. Sometimes they think it is a, it's a police station. You, you understand what I mean? Yeah, so, yes, I understand. Uh, yeah, in your own perspective, how did the STA now demystify this fear factor? To the well, present respect, you know, that yes. you now uh, how, as you, as you put it in your book, how yes, did you I'll, write this? Yes, I, I would say that when we started to listen to taxpayers, understand their situation, what they said was that you have to be helpful. If you can help me, assist me, show me how to do it right, I'm more than willing to try to do this. But if you treat me in a way that I feel judged beforehand, you don't give me the conditions, you're arrogant, accusive, and so on, then it won't work. So when we brought in this uh, knowledge in the organization, uh, that then we realized that there are other ways to achieve compliance than to like 
faster taxpayers scare them into compliance. If we can carry out what we do for the taxpayers instead of against, against them, that works better. So let me give you an example when it comes to enforcement. In the past, we said that you should be aware that if you not, uh, you know, declare all your taxes, we will come after you and, you know, exactly. you will, we will end up with, with some fines and stuff. And people, the, the motivation for compliance is just that you're afraid, as you said, you're afraid of the agency. So you're scared. But if we change that into the way that we, you know, that's you, you're welcome to contact us so we can, you know, aid you and assist you to do it right. And we will yeah. make sure that others, uh, you won't face unfair competition because of others are non-compliant. And, you know, if you run a business, we as human beings or, or business owners, we will react a lot, a lot to, towards what we think is unfair. And people think it's unfair if I'm going to pay my taxes, but the others, they're not paying. So yeah. they want the agency to do something about it. So we focused more on that. And of course, if, if you know that if I'm one of those who are non-compliant, that the tax agency will do something. But the assumption is that people want to do their fair share and we do something for the taxpayers. And especially when it comes to different lines of business and sort of. So it was a change in communication, sort of, and the taxpayers they thought that, okay, they, this, this feels better. I understand that I have to be compliant, but it's okay if you make sure that others will be compliant. Okay. So that's the, now, the short version. Uh, yeah, 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 right. Now, now, just related to that, uh, so like mm -hmm. what, what we witnessed and what most uh, revenue administrations will, uh, will actually attest to is, uh, uh, people will always say, uh, why are we paying taxes? So uh, they, they, they need to see, um, they need to see uh, some kind of benefit, direct benefit in terms of maybe provision of public goods, uh, that kind of thing. So is it something uh, uh, you, you mentioned like the, the, in, in, in Sweden, they, they, they are talking about uh, why are not others paying and I'm paying? But now something can also that uh, that that is very relevant uh, in this part of the world is is like what is the government doing with these uh, monies that we are paying? So is it something that you also experience? Yes, I mean when it comes to paying taxes, people yeah. will of course want to know why should I pay taxes? Yeah. Yes, yeah. and that could be different reasons. I mean, in, as you said, in Sweden. People think that if I pay my taxes, I want welfare now for this, yeah. but the motion, motivation can vary. It mustn't be that. I know that in South Africa, maybe we have some colleagues from South Africa that had like the payoff for a better South Africa. And then you pay taxes more as an investment for a better future. So you pay taxes for something to everyone perhaps see in certain tax context that it's not working the best, but paying taxes will help develop into a situation for coming generation for a better future. And that could also be a motivator. I think that uh, something is going to be better in the future, even if it's not working perfect now. So it can differ in different contexts, uh, the motive, why, why you pay taxes. So um, just, just going back to the fear, um, yes. In 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 uh, in, uh, in a very clear uh, contextual form, um, uh, maybe you could uh, just highlight maybe some three key transformations that led to having uh, uh, STA being respected than being feared. Uh, any lessons um, that we can learn from? Yes, I will think think that. Um... Listening to taxpayer is one lesson that we have learned that every time we think that we know what taxpayers need, we're wrong. So yeah. just to listen for sure, it's some is a takeaway that we think it, it's so important. I know that the IRS in the US, they, they uh, talk about the blind assumption theory that you just think, you know, and you, you take actions towards that. I think to listen for real to see what taxpayers struggle with is uh, something that has helped us a lot uh, and helped us look ourselves in the mirror. It helps 
us to, to change ourselves. So that is one very, very important takeaway. And also to involve staff in this uh, change or the transformation has been crucial. So the staff will also ask why, why are we going to change? Is it something wrong what we have done in the past or we're doing now? Uh, what is wrong with that? Especially when it comes to enforcement. Some say that if, if I do an audit and I will like raise a million Swedish crown, isn't that good that we, I mean, get this money for, for the government? And we've had some discussions about that. And we say that, of course, we want the tax system to work as smooth as possible. But let's say that we can identify these situations earlier on. So the taxpayers perhaps can do it more right from the start instead of us coming a few years later, raising money. That is a better result as we see it. We can get the taxpayer right on track. And having discussions with our staff, uh, answering the question, why, why are we going to change? And that we have staff and managers within the organization that takes this discussion has also been one very, very important takeaway. And the, the third takeaway I want to, to highlight is to, to really carry out your business in another way. It's not enough that you, you know, talk about, you have a different approach and then you do business as usual. You have to change what you're doing and change, no matter what kind of change it is, it hurts a little bit, you know. We were safe doing the same things that we did last year. But if you're going to do something else in another manner, that is always something that you don't really know how it's going to, to end up. And that is, of course, something that happens in our organization as well. But you have to, I mean, communicate in another way, use your enforcement resources in another way, cooperation more in another way, sort of. So, so it's not that the fine, fine words, it's not enough. You have to do what you're supposed to do in another way also. So there, there are three like lessons learned or, or key insight that I want to highlight. There are of course others also, but uh, yeah. these have been very, very important for us in the transformation. Oh, so one of the, the last one, you've really tacked on uh, uh, change management. So yes. you, you really need to actually uh, 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 explain to the, uh, the taxpayers why you are maybe coming from uh, a comfort zone to something that maybe will be for their betterment. Uh, uh, that one is very, very true. Now, um, now we, 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 we go back to um, what, what you had uh, actually highlighted in your last uh, presentation. Um, uh, this is in relation to supporting voluntary uh, compliance. Uh, this one happens uh, uh, from my experience in, in TADAT you know, assessments. Uh, you'll find that many uh, tax uh, administrations uh, heavily uh, have heavily invested in, in supporting voluntary compliance. Uh, uh, and whereby it, it can be attested uh, to like having such things like uh, effective channels of communication, uh, feedback mechanism, use of uh, social media, automated telephone exchange systems, uh, et, et, et cetera, you can name them. Uh, but, but, but if you look further, because Tadari itself looks at the wholesome, uh, you know, uh, tax administration. So you have now these other four pillars of compliance. So you, 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 that is now registration, uh, filing, payment, and reporting, accurate reporting. So you will see that as much as tax um, uh, authorities have invested or agencies or services have invested in supporting voluntary compliance, uh, much is not translated into now uh, promoting these four pillars of compliance. So you'll find they have issues to do with the register, they have issues to do with filing, they have issues to do with even taxpayers uh, accurately reporting what uh, uh, they are supposed to report uh, to their true reflections of their trading activities. So what, where is the disconnect? Uh, just in a nutshell, where, from your own experience? Uh, have you yes, I would say that, 
in in order to get it going, you have to consider it all. I mean, it's like a chain. It's not stronger than the weakest link, so to say. So just to give you examples what what we have done, if we have developed in the Swedish tax agency an e-service and the taxpayers still has to, you know, extract something from his or her business system, typing it in to, to in an e-service for us, that is something that could, you know, take time for the business owner, not, not smooth enough compared to when you filed on paper. So we had this situation many years ago now where we were criticized because the businesses said that, well, I have everything here and now you want me to sit and, you know, fill it all in, in an e-service. And when we didn't realize it from the business owner's perspective, uh, we developed the wrong solutions. So if we end up with that, uh, then it's, it's of course natural that the businesses would prefer to do it another way. So you have to understand it from the business side. You have to look at the data quality. You have to look at what it, how it's handled within the tax agency. You have to consider it all. So, mm. so if one part is not working here, I think you will see consequences. But what we won't do is to put all the burdens on the shoulders of the taxpayers, which we did in the past. The result of that was that the taxpayers thought that this is so, so complicated, so I have to, you know, get assistance for, from someone in order to be compliant. And they paid someone to, to help them be compliant. That is not yeah. the case in, in our environment now. We have relationship directly more, more or less with every taxpayer's even if, even if we have tax consultants and so on. But, but just for filing, and especially when it comes to private individuals, it's more easier now. So most of them can, can do it themselves. But to really take this outside perspective and look at all the different moments that uh, is affected uh, when it comes to this, I would say from my experience, you have to do. And so if you have like a silo thinking and you only look at the e-service, and you do not consider what it is in the, the business perspective, then you, you perhaps will fail or you won't see this development that we all want to see. And I can carry on with this if you like. Uh, when, uh, when, um, when we see that it works, mm. I would say it's a win-win situation because if it works in the businesses, if the business owner has what, what they want to have in order to be compliant, we will see at the tax agency that there are less non-compliance, there are less unintentional errors. It's smooth, it's, it's running, so to say. But if it's very, very hard for the taxpayers to understand and be compliant, we try to inform it. We see lots of mistakes. The taxpayers are angry. They are frustrated because it's difficult. And we have piles of you know, work within the tax agency and the taxpayers, they say, this is horrible because I don't know, I don't understand how to do it right. So mm -hmm. you, it, they're communicating these kind of, of areas in a way that you will end up in a win-win situation if the easiest way for the taxpayer is to be compliant and we can influence that. So uh, you rightly said, uh, I, I can pick out something very clearly from what you just said, is like the, the tiers are supposed to think like the taxpayer. They're supposed to put themselves in the taxpayer's shoes. Yes, so, exactly uh, so. Yeah, so that they can have, they, 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 they can have maybe their programs or initiatives uh, very well communicated. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, taxpayers can, can easily now comply and pay taxes and maybe get better services from the government. Yeah, uh, exactly so. Otherwise, yeah. we're doomed to fail, actually, because we have yeah. lots of experience when it comes to, to run business within the tax agencies. I know that you have many, many years for the KRA, the Kenyan Revenue Agency, and lots of experience there. And you know the culture that could be in a tax administration. You see when people have filed and you look at the, all the information, the cases and so on. But in order to really understand what you want, what you have to prioritize as a tax agency, you have yeah. to, as you said, see the world more from the taxpayer's perspective in the taxpayer's shoes. Like 
what is what is it to be in the construction business for example how does yeah. it work how do you business uh, what aid uh, do we need to support from the tax agency in order to to strive for more compliance environment can we cooperate perhaps with with some agencies and some other organizations in order to get it going that is something that we have done in, in sweden which has been very very fruitful we have learned a lot and we see that we, we we join with other other agencies other organizations in order to to get it more compl- pro compliant and, and easier for taxpayers to to run their business uh, that, that that is very good uh, like now if you come to the chadat methodology uh, uh, we are uh, we are developing the uh, the linkages uh, between the the nine performance outcome areas uh, whereby actually we are seeing results. We, we are seeing them as, as you do these assessments. You, you will see that uh, if whatever that you've done, like for example, if you don't have a, a register, uh, an automated register, uh, a high integrity register, and then, then of course that one will impact, will impact uh, very heavily on, on, on filing and payment because uh, uh, then uh, it, it always says that now if you have a, a good register, automated, taxpayers are registering uh, 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 at their comfort of maybe their homes, uh, their offices or wherever they are on their mobile devices, uh, then, uh, then um, they can still do it, uh, file now the returns based now on the information that has been fed. So you'll find that uh, it, the register itself is, is related to filing pure four and and pure five now the the payment side uh, and even even voluntary uh, tax compliance so if the register is not uh, current let's say mm-hmm. it's not current uh, it, it, it's not adequate uh, and then even if you are communicating to, to the taxpayers uh, voluntary tax compliance you 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 don't know even your your taxpayers you don't know the extent uh where your taxpayers reach uh, where they end uh, where they start so you need to have a good register for you now to know whom are you communicating to so we are kind of like developing uh linkages uh that actually are uh, informing us a lot as as you do the assessments you, you just see these uh these things happening i don't know if you have any comment on this well i i know that the conditions vary around the world then and, and we have I would say that we have like a good track of taxpayer when it comes to to that kind of information that you describe and actually you will get a personal identification number when you're born in Sweden and this number is used for all purposes in the society uh, so it could be like taxes but but also when it comes to to other services and even services when it comes to the private sector everyone uses that number so the quality of that is of course a good base for us. Uh, and it's the same when it comes to, to companies, if they're registered, that, that is not the, the, the real challenge for us. But if I'm totally with you that if you do not have quality when it comes to this, if you don't have quality when it comes to whom you're talking to, that will that is so important to get everything else going. And also when it comes to taxpayer rights, rights of pension and benefits and so on in society to to really focus on a good quality data quality when it comes to that i would say is uh, is crucial in order to get everything else uh, going but i know that systems vary and the more international we become it's uh, it, it's more challenging uh, of course but if you want to prioritize something and you see that you have very very poor data quality, knowing who the taxpayers are, I think that is a good start to see how can you, I mean, focus on that and increase the quality perhaps. Okay. Do you agree, uh, Des? Do you yeah, agree I agree. I, I, I agree. Uh, especially the point you mentioned that uh, um, like in Sweden, uh, the, the registration ra- starts right at, at birth. Mm, so, yes. The, the tax agency uh, uh, is is it, it's in some way uh, connected to the registrar of uh, maybe birth and death, 
so the number you get when you are born, uh, it's now like your, your tax registration number, that kind of thing. So that, that one, I agree with you, that one can be, can remove in so many loopholes and can in itself clean the register just automatically. Okay, so um, that one, I, I really agree with you. Now, the, 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 now on another different, uh, now uh, thinking all together as uh, something else, um, now uh, could we say, could one argue that uh, the level uh, that STA has reached is related to the whole government approach to service delivery, uh, more so about the strides achieved uh, in economic growth and development? Uh, uh, something about that, if you could just share some yes. light. Really I will say it. that that you you're on something here. The whole of government approach is a good thing, but especially you know shifting perspective from our perspective being an agency to see it more from the taxpayer's point of view, yeah. where you have all the agencies, of course, the whole of government, but also other important stakeholders. So it's more than the whole of government approach. I think yeah. that. Nowadays, uh, when we use uh, technology in a wise way, you have software providers, you have like uh, other organizations of taxpayers that's also very important, the taxpayer itself. So I would say that the whole of government approach is not enough if you want to succeed because okay. we don't have like government software and, and so sort of like that. So we have to understand from the taxpayer's point of view, it's not easy to know what are, what are the things the tax agency is handling and what are these other agencies handling? And when they ask us questions, they sometimes don't really know uh, who's responsible. And in that situation, it's good that we realize it from taxpayers' point of view and we can join together. For example, if you're going to get a driver's license in Sweden, we have some different agencies responsible. But yeah. from, from the, the citizen just wanted the driver's license and don't really care about these all agencies. So they're joined together. And it's the same in Sweden. If you're going to start a company, we are some other uh, governments responsible for this. But we have joined together, trying to see it from those who wants to start a company. They want to consider, should I, should I start a company? That is yeah. the situation many not that you have started, then the, the train has left, so to speak. So you consider it and you want to know, should I do this or not? And then we are like joint with information and, and stuff in order to assist the taxpayer in, in this, this situation. So we go going more towards this understanding taxpayers situations and how we can join with different stakeholders, government and perhaps non-government organization in order to to make it easier for for the taxpayers to to handle these situations so that is the approach as i see oh so you you you've rightfully uh, mentioned that it's not just enough uh, for no. the whole government approach that one i agree no uh, exactly. so yeah in Sweden, do you have as uh, situations because uh, tax administrations always face uh, this other dilemma like they, 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 they are technical in nature, uh, 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 but there is the, also the political side, uh, that's the government. So the government has its own uh, uh, goals to achieve. Uh, the tax agency, which now uh, acts on the facts on the ground uh, is driving maybe in another direction. So we, 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 we might have uh, some uh, conflicts uh, in the sense that, uh, I, I just give you an example. Like the, the, the tax administration can, can be achieving the targets that are set by the government. Uh, all the time they are just achieving the targets. Uh, and then now the government says, uh, this is uh, now we gave them, we gave them uh, uh, very you know, uh, easy targets. Uh, maybe we should raise them. So they, they, they raise the targets uh, within, within the financial year. I, I don't know if such thing happens in Sweden, uh, does it? Well, if I understand you right, Des, the governments want you to go after more money during the yeah. fiscal year. Yes. Yeah. But that is something that is not a good aim, actually, <clears throat> I would say. Because if you're, if you're going for this right from the start approach, yeah. you want to focus 
the most on giving the best conditions in order to get it right from the start. And if yeah. you're going to get as much revenue as possible after like audit activities, yeah. each taxpayer that are compliant from the start lowers the possibility to achieve that. So, I mean, you have to set goals in a long-term perspective in order to get the whole of compliance working. So, so if you can contribute to the economic growth, business can carry out its business, and you could have perhaps lower the tax gap a little bit, but get it more right from the start through technology, digitalization, and so on, that must be considered the, the best result, not when we find as much errors as possible. So let, let me give you just an example. I yes. mean, if you have like police out in, in the street and you see that some are going too fast, if yeah. you catch like 100 car drivers, would the police say this was a good result? Or would yeah. they say that this was a bad result? We hope that, that the, the car drivers could perhaps keep to the, to the speed yeah. limit. And yeah. that is the essence here. If we mm. want to get it right from the start, we focus as much as possible on that. We don't want to, you know, have this behavior as tax administration hunting the taxpayers in order to get as much money after all the activities. So therefore, the discussion, this approach, giving conditions to get it right from the start, you yeah. also have to consider what is really the good result here and how yeah. can you, I mean, manage tax agencies in a way that really contributes to this. So I know that this is sensitive topic yeah. could be, but yeah. I hope you understand what I mean. Uh, that I mean, in the I past, know. we really, you know, went after the taxpayers, but now we try our best to use technology to, to get it more right from the start. And well, we consider that a better result. So, so uh, I agree with you that uh, we should strive to improve uh, the processes, uh, the way we, 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 we serve our, our taxpayers. To, to give them an, an enabling environment for them to comply mm -hmm. rather than chasing uh, the, the revenue. Uh, that one can give us like, if we, if we improve our infrastructure capacity in, in revenue administration, uh, then uh, the results will just start coming in rather than just targeting uh, the revenue side, uh, the targets and that, you know, the, the, the numbers uh, that one, I really agree with you. Now, the, just and also to, just, just, yeah. to, just to add there, this, that maybe something, that, okay, this guy from Sweden, he's up in the blue, don't see the non-compliance part. Of, yeah. of course, we react when we see like tax crime and so on, but yeah. as much as possible, we want to, you know, handle it as early as possible before we have lots of non-compliance. So if we can be very early to hinder this uh, instead of, you know, let it all grow and you will get a lot of money uh, afterwards. It's better to handle it earlier and that will be perhaps like less money. So we're not, I say that we're not, uh, you know, we, we're focusing on, on the non-compliance part, tax fraud and so on, of course, also just to, just yeah. to be clear. Oh, that's good. That's good. Then, um, uh, then there is a, how did you deal with um, internal resistance uh, when on your transformational journey? Uh, maybe from the ST8 South, how did, does it deal with that? Or you yes. didn't have any internal resistance? Yes, we, we had the internal resistance, of course. And as we talked about earlier, I think every change you will face that. Uh, mm -hmm. And as I said, the staff, they want to know why. So therefore yeah. we involved them in, in the discussion about why we are doing this. So they were part of this, which was very, very crucial. And also those who held these discussions with the staff and the managers were people working within the agency. So let's say that we, we did a study, which often is, a, it is in an external part that helps us with, with knowledge, taxpayer situation and so on. But let's say that these representatives uh, talk to our staff and say, you know, you should have like more uh, uh, better taxpayer treatment. 
for example. We, we, we think that our staff would say, ah, oh, okay, these yeah. guys, they don't know anything about, you know, orders and stuff. So yeah. we think that they won't listen to that. So therefore it's crucial to get the knowledge, but have the conversation internal yeah. in the organization. We have to be like bearers of this and the staff has to be part of it and it goes into our DNA, so to speak. So th this has been very, very important. So you will, everyone who's going to change, no matter what change, will face some resistance. Oh. And you have to be prepared. You have to have managers and others that are willing to take this discussion for real. Mm -hmm. And and you will get people on board that, that think that this is a good thing to do if they understand. And you will have some that resist, of course. Oh. Now, now, just coming, going back to something we had discussed earlier, but now in a broader sense, in terms of the lessons learned, uh, uh, we, we could say that some, some revenue uh, authorities in Africa or services are, are actually are moving away from uh, over-reliance on, on enforcement, enforcement as, as you rightly put it, and focusing more or less on taxpayer facilitation uh, creating an enabling environment for taxpayers to thrive and do business so that now taxes will just come in or revenue will just come in automatically. So what insights could we learn from STA? Uh, uh, what are maybe some of the pitfalls that maybe you faced along the way? Uh, and how did you uh, overcome them? If, yeah. Well, I would say that I mean, each context is different, of course. I mean, the transformation that we have done, I don't think is a good idea to take just the Swedish thing and trying yeah. to, to do that. Yeah. That is not working. I think I'm sure that all you colleagues in the African context, you know yeah. much better than I do and my Swedish colleagues about how things is working in Africa. And yeah. so, 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 but what you can do is really to understand taxpayer situation in the African context, in your context. And, and by listening, bringing that kind of knowledge into your administration to see what can you prioritize in order to get it going better. So that is, that is something that I think is uh, something to learn uh, that we all can, can learn from. And when it comes to like pitfalls, I would say mm -hmm. that, that there are some things that I and may, maybe my colleague Lennart who wrote the book together with me uh, regret. And that is that sometimes when we get like new knowledge and you just you know throw it out in the organization there is a risk that some people who are responsible for this will feel that it becomes like a blame game you know yeah. i maybe it was you this responsible for this death and we say that oh no uh, we were planning to do this but you know we were a bit stressed for time and so on so you could become in this like defense position and then yeah. the organization will be afraid of new knowledge, which is not good. So therefore, what we did was when we collected new knowledge, we said that what we could have done, that is not fruitful to discuss that. Let us sit together now and see what can we do based on these insights looking forward. And that oh. was better, I realized, because when you get this, you know, blame game thing, it's, it sucks. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's hard and people get afraid within the organization. So that is that is a pitfall that I would say that we uh, we, we we just uh, realized it. <laughs> so and it takes time. As I said, change takes time. That is also you. Even if I say that there are po some possibilities to to do it faster in 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 some context, you can I mean really focus on a good taxpayer relation and you can uh, facilitate it in different ways. You have to realize that a long, long-term culture shift it takes some time. Oh. So, so you you have to be patient, and you will see results much later on. It's not within the fiscal year. So. Oh, okay. That 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 that's that's very good. Now, there there, there, are, there are two things I, I I want us maybe just to talk about. Um, uh, maybe you can shed some light on it. Uh, they, they are very. Uh, key to running or administering a, a revenue uh, a services or uh, authority, uh, however you call it. Uh, so the first one is the, the register itself, what we talked about earlier. 
we just want you to give us maybe your experience, uh, the integrity of the taxpayer register, uh, which is anchored now to, uh, to the, the, the four pillars. Uh, it is actually the foundation, the foundation of any tax administration, the register itself. Uh, so how did STA manage to cleanse uh, the, the tax register? Uh, because uh, in, in, in the growth of any tax administration itself, uh, there must be some way of cleaning a register. Uh, maybe uh, from where you came from, maybe the manual systems and maybe now the, uh, the automated systems. So, uh, and how, after cleaning the register, if I think you went through that cycle, uh, how did it relate to revenue mobilization? Uh, what lessons were, were learned from the, the whole exercises? Uh, the whole exercise. And, 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 and as rightfully as you said, uh, you can come up with, with uh, solutions like you want to automate everything, but that would be not be the right uh, maybe thing for all the taxpayers. Some taxpayers would always say uh, they want to do their own thing the way they know, they just want to fill the form manually, you understand? So some, yeah. some revenue uh, services, they, 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 they have a hybrid. They have manual systems and the automated systems. Uh, I, I don't know how you strike a balance uh, between that kind of thing. Uh, th that is something I just wanted to shed some light on. Yes, thank you, Des. Uh, let me start with the use of digitalization. And you said that you have manual process and digital processes. We have that. And I think that we must understand that not all taxpayers uh, prefer digital solutions. So our strategic aim is to use technology in a way that really benefits taxpayers. So instead of forcing taxpayers into digital solutions, we try to involve them that when we develop solutions so they feel that this is good for me, for real. And I think that that is very, very good for us because the payoff sort of is when taxpayers prefer these solutions. But if we make them like mandatory, maybe they're not that, that good. Taxpayers struggle with it, but they will feel like you forced into it and you will perhaps do it, but not, not that smooth. So the use of digitalization and technology, in our opinion, we think is better to try to really use the benefits. And if some taxpayers do not prefer this, uh, we can use digital solutions in a way that you don't have to be like a tech guy in order to, to, um, to use it. For example, if you look at television, that is technology, but yeah. you, you don't think about it. You say, I'm just watching the telly here and that's what yeah. I do. And by us developing together with other solutions that is more, more or less intuitive, that is very easy for taxpayers to understand. There's logic from, from their point of view. We, we think that we can include more taxpayers in using them. And we see that how can we provide benefits for reals? So if it's a business owner, is the information accurate? Does it come in the right time, the right context for the business owner? Or is it like a half year too late, for example? Can we do something about it? Then the, the other thing that you touched upon is more like integrity and data quality and so on. And I think that it's very, very important for us as tax administration to really respect that every information we get from taxpayers, we have to handle really, really respectfully. So yeah. if the taxpayers feel like we're abusing their personal uh, integrity in a sort of way, that will have effects on the compliance, the relation. If they feel like, for example, the Swedish tax agency that we do not handle their information with care, maybe they will be afraid to ask us. So they can't really know how to be compliant because they're afraid of us using this information. So therefore we say that you can contact us, you can be anonymous and uh, you should feel that there are mechanisms in the, the tax agency that really concern the, the privacy part of taxpayers' information. So keeping registers in track, you know, and uh, a good quality there 
is not only a good quality for us handling our business, it's also something that affects the relation between the taxpayers and, and us. And, and sometimes it could be enough that we know that the information is in the taxpayer's environment. For example, all the business transactions, we don't have to bring it all into to the tax agency in order to see that it's compliant because that could be considered like mass surveillance that could have like negative effects on the taxpayer's relation. We should never, you know, take in more information that we actually need. So that is also very important when it comes to this area, I would say. So it's not the more the merrier, it's the right. Yeah. <laughs> right okay, uh, thanks so much. Now, just a quick one. Now, on, on, on the issue of risk management, uh, you understand and appreciate. Without really going into the, 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 I know risk is very complicated, risk as a term in itself or an area of even study, um, but it's, it, is, it, is, it is the catchphrase, the catchphrase for running any kind of a business, uh, be it uh, uh, the revenue administration, be it any other kind of business, uh, so, uh, in a broad sense, how has uh, STA uh, managed risk? Uh, uh, keeping in mind, I don't really want you to go into the technical details, just uh, risk uh, to revenue in, in regards to compliance risks and uh, institutional risks. Uh, and then marrying it down to now what we talked about, the, the, the manual or the traditional economy uh, transforming into the digital uh, economy. Uh, 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 we have some, you know, risks associated like, like, like these people who just make payments online. Uh, you, you understand uh, where they are, they are not even within the, the purview or, or the space of the STA. How, how do you manage these uh, kind of risks? Uh, just a broad view, uh, both yes. uh, bank risks and institutional risks, uh, given now the, the, the stages in the economic growth. Yes, uh, that is, of course, not easy to answer exactly, but what we are doing now differently compared to what we did in the past, that we use this risk analysis thinking broader than just connected to enforcement activities. In the back, back in the days, we used like risk analysis to find these, you know, non-compliance areas, for example. But now we use risk analysis in order to see what is not working more broader. And that could be a range of activities that could be the solution. It depends on why uh, we have these risks. And it could be like in-house risks, of course, when it comes to, uh, is it uh, you know, caring for integrity for taxpayers? It's a, or our, is our digital structure structured in a way that uh, sensitive information is just handled by few uh, co-workers or is it like broad can we are we are we doing that could be a risk as well and um, when it comes to compliance risks that, that we often do have a, a view of treatment that is broader it could be a combination of activities it could be information cooperation enforcement like a like a package uh, of, of um, outcome when it comes to to the risks we see and also that we want to, to keep it on a higher level. So we don't think that the taxpayers are the risks. Yeah. That they're not the risks. I mean, the yeah. human behavior is according to, to what's around us. So let's say that we have like 10,000 taxpayers from, from Kenya moving to Sweden. They will adopt to the system as we think that you will see how are others, are others compliant, what's the possibility to be compliant, et cetera. And uh, maybe there will be some differences for taxpayers in different systems. So we don't want to see the taxpayer as such as a risk. It's more a risk of areas and, and behavior on an overall level. And we have to, to understand this and perhaps contribute to do or influence the structure or, or the environment around the taxpayers in order to reduce the risks. So we use this risk thinking, but it's much broader nowadays compared to how we used it in the past. 
just a, a bit of the risk, just a small expansion of the risk area. H have you, in, in your experience in STA, uh, done any studies, uh, maybe uh, to gauge uh, taxpayers' behavior, uh, like in terms of like why uh, these taxpayers, this cluster of taxpayers or group of taxpayers, uh, uh, they don't pay taxes, they don't want to comply. Yes. Uh, they, they behave in a certain way, uh, given now some conditions uh, from the yes. SDA. Have you ever done Yes, we, we have done studies, but it's uh, usually like a, a smaller area. For example, when it comes to, to declare uh, capital gains, if you have sold shares and so on, we could yes. see that many taxpayers, they just don't understand how to do it right because it's so hard. And, yeah. and when we realize that that is for many taxpayers, the reason for non-compliance, then of course, enforcement is not the right way to go. It's more that we have to first see that everyone is, is able to be compliant, that we sort it out, you know, in a way that the possibilities are there. Because if you declare, you try your best and you thought that, well, I, I did my best. And then the tax agency, they say, that, okay, you did wrong here, Des. You, you've been mm -hmm. non-compliant. And you will say to, to us at the Swedish tax agency, you know, I tried to look at your website and I, I tried to reach you, but that was not yeah. possible. And this is yeah. what I've done. And I, I just end up this and I tried my best. That will get people angry. So if we realize that non-compliance due to these kind of things, we have to do our homework. We have to, you know, make it easier to be compliant. And then we do enforcement activities as well. But giving, giving everyone a fair chance to be compliant, that is the first step. And also that makes enforcement legitimate when we, when we use it. So that's the, the short answer. <laughs> I think it. Yeah, yes, uh, uh, we move now to the, the, the questions from the audience. Uh, someone mm -hmm. has asked, uh, uh, how, have there been agenda considerations uh, in designing the systems to make it more friendly? Uh, like when you design your systems, uh, did, did you bring in the, the gender equation? Uh, uh, well, actually what, what it was, was that we tried to think of what is really good result for us. And we yeah. realized, as I said at the beginning, that we want to get it more right from the start. And then we we'll try to see what can contribute, what can we do in order to get it right from the start? And we had discussion with our management team and that everyone thought it, that this is a really good idea. So when it comes to agenda setting, that was kind of natural that we have to listen to taxpayer, put it on the agenda and so on. But we also involved the Minister of Finance in order to hear their view. Uh, because if, if you have like a ministry that has a totally different view, then perhaps it won't, won't work. And we described this thinking about getting it right from the start. And they said that, okay, it makes sense. I mean, that seems like a good approach, but if you don't have like these kind of stakeholders on board that could, that could ruin these good, good initiatives. So, so for us, th that was the easy part, the, the agenda setting, but then all the transformation, get it going, backlashes, everything. You have to read the books and those who are interested. <laughs> Uh, just uh, one last question from the audience. Sure. Um, what are the costs and the human resources uh, changes when a country wishes uh, to change from this fear-based cooperation uh, 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 to, I think maybe, uh, 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 I think what, what he or she meant is now the friendly, the friendly yes. cooperation. Well, it's, it's very, uh, very tough. This is from yeah, it's, it's, it's very yeah. tough. We haven't measured actually in that sense yeah. because it has been a part of our ordinary business. So we yeah. have not like measured exactly. But what we can see from our studies when uh, when we can really make it easy for taxpayers to do it right, as I said, then we see that it also becomes more right. It's it's a higher level, so it's like a win-win situation. Uh, getting a, a good Taxpayer treatment or focusing on a good taxpayer treatment has 
resulted, I would say, in a higher level of trust for the institution. We know that trust levels are important for the willingness to comply, but also the possibilities for taxpayers to use their rights. So uh, we see good results in, in this kind of measures, but to see it, what it costs the whole of the thing, uh, I, I don't really know. But I'm, I'm sure that it's a better situation for taxpayers now, according to the studies, than it was in the past, where it's, the taxpayers struggled, lots of costs for the taxpayers also. Okay. Uh, that, that, that is uh, uh, just uh, before we go back to Annette, uh, I think our time is up. Uh, yes, it's up. Parting shot, uh, one last parting shot, uh, just to the tax community who are in the audience. From you, one last parting shot. Oh, what, okay. I, I must just just to to wrap it up. I just yeah. love this kind of of, uh, of discussion with tax colleagues. Yeah. I can't see you now when you're on screen or, or listening, but I think that. We have much to learn from each other. Now I'd share some, some takeaways from the Swedish tax agency, the transformation. But I think we face more or less the same challenges all over the, the, the tax world, so to speak. So <clears throat> therefore, I think it's a good, so good initiative of, of IMF into that. And it was so nice to interact with you, Des. And yeah. uh, I really look forward to, to more of this. So, so thank you, everyone, for listening. And thank you for for having me in, in, in this podcast. Thank you so much. Uh, over to you, Annette. Thank you so much, Des. Anders, just wonderful. The time flew by so quickly. I wanted to share with our audience, we have people listening in from Kenya, from Zimbabwe, from mm -hmm. Bangladesh, from Ethiopia. And I apologize if I missed anyone, but thank you so much. The chat, the chat was very active today. We had wonderful questions. We've noted down questions that we didn't get to today and we'll pose them to Anders at some future event. Always a pleasure to have you, Des. Thank you so much for your insightful questions and for finishing promptly on time. <laughs> it's no easy feat. No, yeah. um, <laughs> thank you very much um, to our audiences. Please uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We invite you to uh, view Anders' um, presentation from May 11th, where he presents more in depth about his um, recent book that was published. And we provide the link to um, get your own copy as well here in the YouTube channel. So thank you all very much. Have a wonderful weekend. And uh, we'll see you next time. We do. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 <laughs>